Shalom. Call Layla Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai Bahashem Urkon Kadash. All praises be to the Most High Yahweh in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad. Double honor and respect to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson, keeping our eye on the prophecies. So I really haven't come up with a title, but as for now, that's probably going to be the title. <clears throat> but nevertheless, I want to talk briefly about some of the things that we're witnessing on the earth today in these last days. We're living in some very, very exciting and crucial times. Exciting, but yet dangerous times, or the Bible describes as times of great peril. But I want to talk about what we're seeing as it relates to the word. So I want to go. This is the video that I came across here. A um, video on TikTok. This is a Simpsons. A Simpsons cartoon. That shows a lot of the things that. The global elite are working behind the scenes. Because we know when you follow the money trail, those that control these shows and these narratives, all of the scripts are part of the small few that govern and run the world. And we know who they are. Biblically, they're Amalek or the Amalekites. But this cartoon shows an underground harp machine or weather manipulation machine that can create storms, earthquakes, hurricanes, so forth and so on. So you can read the upper left-hand corner on your own. So the type of warfare that exists today, or what we call modern warfare, it's literally out of this world. We're talking about satellites that can track and target and destroy vehicles, equipment, buildings on Earth from outer space. Laser technology and precision global positioning tracking technology, Bluetooth technology, so forth and so on. Even weather manipulation and creating ground penetrating devices that can shake the earth remember when we study the scriptures that that man of sin has a god complex let's go here first to second thessalonians so when studying prophecy, it's not isolated events, but it's all the events or the recipe being mixed with the right ingredients at the right time, phase, and sequence. The children of Israel waking up around the world, that man of sin being revealed, Armageddon or the Third World War brewing up, the mandatory implementation of the Mot B or C hip is the major trigger that's going to cause the power, the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to strike with fire. Let's read this. Second Thessalonians 2, verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. So the wicked global elite Amalek is being consumed by the word of prophecy. 
they're being revealed as the wicked, that man of sin. Remember, the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. Really, when you look at this thing from a broader perspective, that war with Amalek is going to be the final battle when Yahweh cracks those skies. So he's going to finish where the Israelites left off being attacked by Amalek or being at war with Amalek. So the major characters are going to be on the scene when that final battle takes place. <clears throat> Matter of fact, Saul did not finish the, the work to destroy Amalek, utterly destroy them. So that's going to be accomplished. They're going to be rendered combat ineffective, destroyed. <laughs> and the entire nation of Edom is going to go into captivity. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. So he's coming back with the chariots of the Lord, the so-called UFOs. But that coming must be prophesied first by the men of the Lord. And that's being done now. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. And this is where we got to stop and examine. This is what Yahabashai was talking about. Let's go back to the image. After the workings of Satan, tremors, weather manipulation, synthetic food, synthetic fruit and vegetables, chemical sprays, chemical trails, see, causing fire to come down from heaven, firepower from this man's military. He is the flame breathing dragon, the great red serpent, the wicked global elites of Edom, which is nested primarily with Amalek, the approximately 1% that's ruling the world. <clears throat> so after the workings of Satan, <clears throat> even him who's coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Project Blue Bean, look that up. Lying wonders, the ability to heal, so-called, with the medicinal and pharmaceutical industry and the robotics, electronic or robotic arm, bionic legs, you see, heart implants, so forth and so on, aesthetic hands, merging man with machine. Let's see what Yahweh Shai said. He talked about this right here. Matthew 24, verse 24. For there shall arise false Hamashiachs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. But the elect are not going to be deceived, because Bible prophecy is in the minds of the elect. So the elect are grounded in the doctrine. See that? So Yahweh Shai talked about these great signs and wonders. Ooh, remember, Looking at prophecy, we have to look at the entire picture. The man of sin coincides with these great signs and wonders. His military power, his fire power, his air power, his space force, his aesthetic and robotics industry, advanced technology industry. You see, 
laser precision guided munitions. Ooh, CERN. Almost forgot. CERN. <coughs> Weather manipulation. Ground penetrating radar. Ground penetrating munitions. They have what's called bunker busters. Bunker busters. That can penetrate deep beneath the Earth's surface and create a man-made depression in the ground or a crater. This man is armed to the teeth. Why you think King David said, break their teeth? In fact, <clears throat> let's get that. Break their teeth. This might be Psalms 58. We'll see. Break their teeth. So he's literally armed to the teeth. Psalms 58. <clears throat> Let's go to verse 5. Which will not hearken to the voice of charmers, charming never so wisely. They're compared to a serpent. So we're under the great red dragon, Rome, Edomites, and the crosshairs is on the wicked global elite that attend the Bilderberg meetings, the Council on Foreign Relations, the Club of Rome. You see? And there's another one, Bohemian Grove. Bohemian Grove in Southern California. So really, the rose is pinned on the rulers of the land. But the entire nation of Edom is subject and prone to judgment. The Lord punishes nations. So King David is talking about this beast. <clears throat> the, their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the deaf adder that stoppeth her ear, which will not hearken to the voice of charmers, Charming, never so wisely. And this is why they're being consumed by the word. It irks them. It agitates them. They can't stand it. This is why Esau cried with a great cry. Has now but one blessing for me, my father. Bless me, O my father. Even me also. So this word has no place in them. They're grieved at the word. They're being set on fire from the inside out. Verse 6. Break their teeth, O God, in their mouth. Break out the teeth. Break their teeth, O God, in their mouth. Break out the great teeth of the young lions, O Lord. So they're military. This is why we use the term arm to the teeth. He's talking about destroy their militaries. A nation's military must be destroyed in order to take down a nation. So Yahweh Shai is going to spearhead the effort of dismantling this global military, economic, religious, and technocratic machine. And has a political and religious proponent as well. The Roman Catholic Church. And then the Rothschilds lead this economic system. And they're steering the world towards a global digital currency. Under the Central Bank Digital Currency and the SWIFT program. Which is going to make the dollar obsolete. So this thing is going to be connected to a digital device that's going to be mandated for every inhabitant in the earth. So Yahweh Shai spoke about this man. Let's go back to it. Matthew 24 and 24. For there shall arise false anointed and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. So this man is being identified. 
He is the devil. Esau, Edom, Romans. They're not white. That is a socially engineered man-made construct. They are red. See, Second Thessalonians 2 and 9. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. With all, let's look that word up, Satan. So remember, one of the definitions of Satan, we'll look it up. Satan, <coughs> excuse me, Satanas, Satanas. Devil, accuser. Right here. Look at that. A Satan-like man. That's Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. They're not white. They started calling themselves white around 1681 in the state of Virginia. They're red. That's why they're called this kingdom of rulership, the great red dragon, under the Romans, the revised Roman Empire, where they were spawned out of the Renaissance or rebirth as early as the late 1300s going into, up and leading unto around 1453 or so. But it was a process of a Steady downward spiral or decline of the Israelites ruling Europe during the so-called medieval or dark ages. It was a process. It didn't happen overnight. This is why when it came into power, that time frame is called what? The Age of Enlightenment. Hence, we get the term Luciferians, Illuminati, Illuminated Ones. So the period after the Dark Ages is called the Age of Enlightenment. The Luciferians, the light bearers, so-called. Let's go back into that. A Satan-like man. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. So there's going to be two-thirds of the Israelites that are going to be cut off and die here in the daughter of Babylon, America. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So the two-third Israelites, they trust in this system under AI, Bluetooth, Blu-ray. They trust in the new Bitcoin digital currency under the central bank digital currencies or CBDC. They trust in an automated AI fashion kingdom that's built on artificial intelligence, or falsehood. They trust in that. It is not authentic. It's fabricated and built on lies. <clears throat> so this is not a true kingdom that's going to be built on righteousness. But Jacob to come under Yahweh Shai is going to be built on righteousness. So this system is based on falsehood, lies, artificiality. Let's close out here. One of the things that struck me about this earthquake is many of the elect is going to be delivered just before the great earthquake, and that's the major nuclear destruction of the daughter of Babylon. We're going to scarcely be saved. Let's read this. Talking about Paul and Silas. Let's go to Acts 16 and 23. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison. <clears throat> My voice is dry in Salakia. 
and when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, keep them secure, who having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. Does not the Bible say in the last days, the devil shall cast some of you into prison? Yes, but the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai is going to loose the chains and bars of those prisons. Right at the brink of a great major earthquake and the elect is going to be freed as birds being freed from the fowler, Esau, or hunter. <clears throat> so what has been will be again. Acts 16 and 24, who having revealed such a charge, tr thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's bands were loose. Beautiful at midnight. Oh, it's beautiful. So this is going to be the changing from one kingdom to another as well. Right at the brink of a great major earthquake. Let's go here to Psalms 119. Verse 61. Psalms 119, verse 61. The bands of the wicked have robbed me, but I have not forgotten thy law at midnight. I will rise to give thanks unto thee because of thy right. <laughs> Verse 62 again. At midnight, I will rise to give thanks unto thee because of thy righteous judgments. Beautiful. So the Lord is going to usher in the kingdom of Jacob right at the brink or the major destruction of the kingdom of Edom. That great earthquake is going to be nuclear. That's going to be the great major earthquake, which is going to finish off Jacob's trouble. But the elect is going to be scarcely delivered out of that. And the prisons are going to be loose that are housing the elect. That's why the Bible says the devil shall cast some of you into prison. Let's close out here. See, it's right here. <clears throat> Revelation 6 and 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal and lo, there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became as blood, a blood moon. And the skies are going to be blotted out and blackened out with major soot. And don't be surprised if this does not occur on a new moon. And the subsequent days of that dark face moon. <clears throat> or right after that new moon. Let's go to Revelation 11 and 13. And the same hour was there a great earthquake in the tenth part of the city fell. And in the earthquake were slain of men 7,000. And the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. The Lord Yahweh Shai Hamashiach is going to crack those skies. And the elect is going to scarcely be delivered. And those that are in prison or in internment facilities or FEMA camps are going to be loosed from the bonds of this wicked kingdom under Satan. 
Let's close out with that one. King David talked about this right here, and we'll end it. Well, there's another one, and I want to get this one. First one right here. See? Psalms 124, verse, we got to go to the top. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. These United Nations and their militaries outside of the nation of Israel are going to come in with stormtroopers like a flood against his heritage. Then the waters had overwhelmed us. The stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. So not only the stormtroopers and the military, but America is going to become a lake of fire, all stemming from the sword of the Lord, which is Esau, Edom, his nuclear arsenal, followed by the laser and chariot fire of the chariots of the Lord, the so-called UFOs. See, then the waters had then the waters had overwhelmed us. The stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. That proud, this is talking about the daughter of Babylon, America. Blessed be the Lord who had not given us as a prey to their teeth, their military and their weaponry. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we are escaped. Beautiful. Just like Peter was delivered out of prison in a trance-like state or semi-consciousness, halfway asleep or half asleep, led by an angel. We can't just read these stories and then throw these stories away in the recycle bin somewhere or the trash compactor. These stories follow us to teach us of things foreshadowed to come or prophesied to come. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we are escaped. Prisons. This system is a prison and its doctrine. But also, this is going to be a physical, literal departure to be delivered. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Yahweh, he is, through his son, Yahweh Shai, our deliverer, our savior. <clears throat> So these things repeat. The Lord does not like to change. He's stuck on his ways. Acts 16 and 26. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loose. So at the presence of the Lord, the earth quakes and shakes. He comes with fire and force, pure power. And the keeper of the prison awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas. 
and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Yahweh Hamashiach, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Many Israelites are going to be delivered that are of the elect at the 11th hour, right at the last minute, so to speak. <clears throat> when they see certain signs and wonders and miraculous events. And this is why the prophets are going hard day in and day out. <clears throat> Revelation 16 and 18. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. That's the culmination event of Jacob's trouble, the tail end of Jacob's trouble, where the elect is going to be saved but Jacob shall be saved out of it. That connects us back to Jeremiah 30 and Daniel 12. See that? So that's the nuclear destruction. The great sword, what we read about in Isaiah 34. The sword of the Lord is going to come upon Idumia. And that great sword that is being wielded or handled by Esau, Edom, is really a sword of the Lord. I forgot where I wanted to go. So that great sword is talking about, it's a dark sand for a nuclear missile. See right here, Jeremiah, uh, Isaiah 34 and 4, and all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, and all their hosts shall fall down, as the leaf falleth off from the vine, and as a falling fig from the fig tree. Just visualize this. Airplanes falling out of the sky. Satellites falling out of the sky. Buildings collapsing and burning. And seeing missile, missiles impacting and coming down from the sky. These missiles looking like figs being blown off the trees on a windy day. A great tempest is going to be stirred up. A tornado mixed with fire and debris. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumea and upon the people of my curse to judgment. So there's going to be bodies strewn everywhere. Bodies everywhere and debris and body parts. Not just corpses, but body parts. And debris and fire and hot liquid lava. These floods that King David talked about. <clears throat> Which is primarily here in the daughter of Babylon, America. So Yahweh Shai is going to rebuke these wicked inventions of these nations, their technology, their weapons, their military, and their strength. He's going to smite to the ground and bring down this kingdom to rubble and debris. The ashes come down and sit in the dust O virgin daughter Babylon. So they're going to be brought down to total ruin, disaster, chaos. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai. Ba'ashem Rekot Kadash. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Keeping our eye on the prophecies. Kwan Yashorelo and the Ba'ad Ba'ad. We got next, Lord willing. Shalom.